Carl, thank you for your time this afternoon. Of course, this does form a part of a restructuring plan that the shareholder um, in Portugal has been a part of. But what other reasons are they giving for divesting from a South African operation? Yeah, firstly, thanks for having me on the show. No, they, they actually never wanted to divest from Mercantile. Um, over the years, they've had plenty of offers, you know, approaches by investment bankers asking whether or not we for sale or not. And we're always part of the African strategy. But they, um, a good few years ago, they borrowed money from the European Central Bank. Uh, and then they had to restructure the loan. And as part of the restructuring process, there were certain austerity measures put in place. And they were basically forced to do three things. One was they had to raise 4 billion euros of capital, which they've done. Then they had to go and do some a restructure of their Portuguese operations. But the thing that affects us is they said that they had to look at the offshore operations and uh, sell off half of the offshore operations. They were basically forced to do it. So they decided to sell Mercantile, the operations in Spain, and the operations in Brazil. Those are the three countries which they are uh, you know, divesting in. Mm -hmm. Carl, w one of the four that are shortlisted here, uh, Arise B&V, yes. uh, they have a reputation, let me say. Yeah. And let's say they look out, th th they've been compared to vulture banks that, uh, or investors that actually look out for uh, situations of this sort and go in uh, when the price is just nice and sweet mm. and they get the deal done. Do you get the sense that this is what's happening here? No, no, definitely not. Because I mean, Arise, it's, if you look at the, the shells in Arise, it's, um, I think it's FMO, no AGMs, it's yes. uh, NOR Fund, yeah. And, um, so it's a very reputable shareholders and they put together a development fund in Africa to invest in financial services businesses. Um, they, so they, I see, they see this obviously as a nice opportunity you know, in which to you know, you get a full banking license in Africa. We can merge another banking. So what they want to do is buy us, then bring in Grinrod at a later stage and merge it into, into, you know, into Mercatile. So you have a combined entity. And then if you look at the two balance sheets, we'll be about a 30 billion rand balance sheet, which is, I think, fantastic. And, uh, and then maybe there's opp opportunity to expand into the rest of Africa. But I think this process, the way this process is, 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 is being followed, it can never give a rise to someone just wanting to have a to get a bargain deal because there's, there's a competitive process. There's four bidders that are yeah, in the shortlist from 18. The 18 offers were received. Uh, it's come down to four now. So obviously price is an important part going forward now. So I think uh, an opportunity to get a bargain is, is very difficult because of the competitive bidding process. Yeah. Right. And let's talk about, apart from the price, what other um, criteria was looked at to shortlist these uh, four consortiums? Yeah, so they had to, what happened was they uh, had to fill in about a 15 page document, you know, and, and part of that was they had to look at the, who the shareholders were. So in other words, you know, who the parties behind so they can do, are they reputable, etc. Then what is the balance sheet size of the shareholders? Can they afford to you know, write out a check and, and buy the bank? Then they had to look at what is the strategy for mercantile going, f going forward? What is the strategy with staff, with management? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there's a list of about five or six criteria yeah, in the document. And then they had to go and you know, complete the document and then it went through a filter process with investment bankers together with our holding company Kaisha went through the filter process and then they uh, they they came up with the four names at the end and then where our banks uh, our board's involvement was was we they presented the shortlist to us we weren't involved in the initial filtering process uh, but we either had to object or not object to the names and uh, as a board yeah we didn't object to any of the four because we we said uh, from a board point of view we want to make sure that our staff are looked after and we want to make sure that our, um, our depositors are looked after our customers yeah, those are two major stakeholders, and uh, and we feel that these four it will look after that. Yeah, uh, going forward, these four that have been shortlisted definitely very reputable in the market right here. Mm. Uh, what would you actually be looking for if you were the ultimate decision maker to actually pen the deal? What would you actually be looking for going forward to make sure that mistakes that might have been made in the past will not be made again? Top line, bottom line looks good, mid term, near term. Mm. Yeah, I think if I was uh, you're going to say, what are the growth prospects? Yeah, how scalable is our business? So. Uh, I mean, we, we've, uh, I think our business model's right. You know, we rated number one in service for business commercial banking for three years in a row. So, so I think we've got that piece nice. We've, uh, we've grown our non-interest income every year for the last you know, three or four years by more than 20%, which is our card business, which is we've just launched the first fleet card in the, in, in the world that's a cross-border fleet yeah, we're together with Visa. We've got a fantastic payments business. We've got a fantastic rental finance business. We start, I mean, the rental finance business we started six years ago from zero and we've grown the book to over a billion rand of lending to small businesses just in, in that space. We launched the first private bank in the country. So I think whoever's buying us and say, how do you use all of this to make to and try and uh, get leverage off, our, you know, off their balance sheet to help us grow and then get scaled in our systems. Uh, we, we've got a brand new core banking system, uh, which is scalable. The State Bank of India uses the same system as us and they've got 100 million customers. So so I think whoever's buying us is you know, going to look at us and say, right, is this uh, model, can they 
continue growing? And if the answer is yes, yeah, we're a good buy. No, absolutely. And you did mention there the opportunity to perhaps expand into Africa mm. um, after this transaction has been completed. But what other opportunities are there um, for the bank? Yeah, if you look at all four, all four of the bidders are very different. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right. And they all open up different opportunities for us. So, so yeah, some of them we might be into the consumer space. Yeah, so yeah, retail banking, uh, big branch networks, etc. Uh, others might uh, provide us balance sheet to go to make acquisitions. So like we don't do asset management, we don't do say uh, trade finance, we don't do factoring. So maybe we can go and buy a couple of those type of businesses or some payments businesses. Others op opportunity to expand into the rest of Africa, which I think is very exciting you know, to me. I've worked a couple of years in Africa in my pre pre previous life. So it's a very exciting growth prospects there. So, so I think everyone brings a different angle and, uh, and they're all very exciting, I think. Yeah. No, absolutely. You say all these things with a big <laughs> smile on your face. So you're yeah, super excited, excited yeah, about what's excited, coming. Yeah. Now, thank you so much for giving us some of your time this afternoon. We've been speaking there to Carl Cumbier, who's the CEO of Mercantile Bank.